Hello, good morning everyone. So in this course, we have already discussed about the analysis and design of your steel members. So may it be tensile members, compression members, flexural members, or maybe the combination of both axial and flexural members. So wait. Okay, so what you are actually seeing in this slide right here are the methods of connections of our steel members. So after designing your members, which are the flexural compression and tensile members, the next thing that you should consider are their connections. So yung connections natin would be in terms of riveting, bolted connections, and welded. So in the books and practice, I mean in the books and in practice, these are the three major methods. So once again, the one on your left is what we would be calling rivet connections. So etong part na to. But confirmation everyone, do you see my laser pointer? Yes, sir. Okay, so this one right here is what we would be calling rivet connections. And this one right here in the middle is what we would be calling bolted connections. And this one right here is welded connections. So for the one on your left, so rivet connections. So I'm not saying that this method is obsolete, but this is rarely used nowadays since it is very costly in terms of labor. But in terms of material cost, medyo mas mura siya as compared to bolted connection. But once again, in terms of labor cost, this would be more costly. And this is quite more dangerous than that of these two because rivets is a hot work. So meaning by hot work, you are to deal with very high temperature. Kasi mainit yung rivets na pinapasok natin dyan. Okay, so aside from that, Another disadvantage of using rivet connections is its higher structural weight. As you can see here, in just one connection, approximately there are more than 50 connections here in just one joint. And aside from that, it lacks aesthetic finish. So if you would be seeing this one right here as compared with the welded connection, it would rather be an eyesore. So ayan. And okay, and this one on the middle is what you would be calling once again a bolted connection. And this is to be our main focus for today's lesson. So for bolted connection, so this would be the connection wherein we are to use common or high strength bolts. So it would be self-explanatory as that. And as for this one right here, this is what you would you would be calling welded connection and structural welding as per definition is a process by which parts of the steel to be connected are heated and fused. So if you can see here, this is the weld itself and it was heated and fused together with a supplementary uh, molten metal at that point. So there, so those would be the three common methods used in connecting the members of our steel structure. Okay, so moving forward, since we are just starting with connections, let's talk about simple connections first. And as per the definition that is stated here in this slide right here, if the line of action of the force acting on the connection passes through the center of gravity of the connection, then each bolt can be assumed to resist an equal share of load. So for pretend that this is to be our connection and these dots right here are your bolts, so Confirmation everyone, nakikita ba yung mga dots dito? Yes, sir. Okay, so for example, that that is to be the uh, connections and let's say that this is to be your force P. So for example, that that is to be your force P. If your force P passes through the centroid of these six connections right here, it is assumed that all of this, um, all of these bolts resist an equal load. So there would oops sorry there would be a resistance here 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 and so far and it is assumed that the loads of all the bolts right here would be p over the number of bolts so if there are six bolts here that is to be p over six a piece so are you guys following yes sir okay how about for yes, the others okay so it would be as simple as that kasi nga simple connection. Moving forward, there are two common ways bolted connections resist loads. So namely that is to be um, bearing type connection and slip critical connection. And for bearing type connection, um, what is assumed here that the loads from each of the members connected. So for example, that this is to be your structural members. So 
Ito yung unang member natin and ito yung pangalawa. And if they are connected, the forces in each member is resisted by the bearing and the shear capacity of this bolt right here. So for example, that this is to be your force P. And in this case right here, VP and yung ginamit niya because the designer used LRFD. So if that is to be your VPN, if that is to be your tensile load, its load is then transmitted to the bolt via contact pressure. And contact pressure is what we would be calling bearing. So there it would be as simple as that. And as for slip critical connection, these loads right here are resisted by our friction. So for example, that this is to be your slip critical connection right here. And as you can see here, both of these members are in contact with each other in this surface right here. And from your statics of rigid bodies, you have learned there that when two surfaces are in contact with each other, there is to be the presence of friction unless their surface of contact is perfectly smooth. But if they are not perfectly smooth, there is the presence of friction. And once again, from your statics of rigid bodies, so if this is to be force F, I mean friction F, so F, friction is equal to mu times N, where mu is to be your coefficient of friction and your N is to be your normal force. And your normal force is the force that is uh, perpendicular to the line of action. So if your line of action in this case is to be horizontal, your normal force is to be your vertical force. For us to have a larger value of F right here, we must have a large value of our normal force. And for our connection, so for us to have a large force F, we must have a large force N. And for us to have a large force N, we can attain that if the bolts are fully tensioned. So if, it, if this bolt right here is to be tightened, the normal force N would be a lot bigger. So from that analogy, the tighter the bolts, the greater its resistance force F. So are you guys following? Yes, sir. Okay, so take note guys that if our force F right here, so if our friction force is greater than that of this load right here, which is V, and we can conclude that our connection is slip resistant connection. So, ayan, slip resistant siya if and only if your friction force F is greater than that of VPN. So, okay, let's go back to bearing type connection. Even though these surfaces right here are in contact with each other, their friction force is to be neglected. So why is that the case? So we assume here that the bolts are not fully tensioned. They are just tightened to the point that is what we would be calling snug tight condition. So snug tight condition. So what does this mean? So snug tight condition is a situation when the surface of the connection, which is here, are just in a firm contact with each other but not as much as pretension bolts. So, so they are just in contact with each other but the normal force right here is fairly negligible. So if it is fairly negligible, your friction force F would be minimal. And thus, we can just assume that it would be experiencing slippage, so doodolas siya. And as you can see here, if, it, if both of these members would slip, there would be the presence of your contact pressure, which is the bearing. So ayon in Tagalog, yung, yung paghigpit natin dito sa bolts na to is hindi siya gaanong mahigpit as compared with the slip critical connection. Because in slip critical connection, we are to use pre-tensioning methods to tighten your bolts into the point that the tensile stress of your bolts would attain at least 70% of its strength. So once again, in bearing type, hindi siya gaano. And in your snug tight condition, the tightness is produced by the effort of a person using spud wrench only. So kapag hindi na kaya ng inyong installer na iikot yan, so it would stop there. But in slip critical connection, you would go through up until you reach at least 70% of the strength of the bolts. Are you guys following? 
Yes, po, sir. And how about for the others? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, okay, let's proceed. So, this would be the various types of the load transfers and the types of joints. So, the first one would be what we would be calling lap joint. So, for lap joint, this is basically just two members overlapping. So, as you can see here, they just overlap. And for pretend that this lap joint right here is a bearing type connection. So, meaning, once again, by bearing type connection, these loads are transferred to the bolts by bearing and not by friction. Okay, so... From that, it would look like this. So, for example, that this is to be your force P. This part of your bolt right here would be subjected to bearing like this. So, there. And if this is to be your load P from the other side, this part of your bolt right here would be subjected to contact force. I mean, contact pressure, which we call bearing, in this manner right here. And to attain equilibrium on your bolt, so if this is to be your bearing due to the force on the left and this is to be the bearing due to the force in the right, we would be having a shear on your um, bolt. So here, this is to be the shear on your bolt. By the way, guys, take note that uh, you would be experiencing bending in our lap joint. So why is that the case? Because if this is to be the centroid of your bolt, so I would just be increasing the size for you to see it better. So there, if for example that this is to be the centroid of your bolt and the centroid of this line of action right here is here and the centroid of this line of action is here, we would be having the presence of eccentricity or lever arm. So meron tayong lever arm dito and force times lever arm is equal to moment. And if there is the presence of bending moments in your uh, structure, you would be experiencing bending. So due to that eccentricity or due to the lever arm, your members and your bolt tends to bend. So are you guys following? Yes, sir. Okay. As for the others? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So ayan, that is for lap joints. So another type of joint is what we would be calling butt joint. And in butt joint, we would be having two shear planes. So as you can see here, we have a shear plane here in this bolt right here. And we also have a shear plane in this part of the bolt right here. So why is that the case? Because in one side, we have two uh, members and in one side, we have one member. So as you can see here, by visual inspection, meron tayong dalawang um, shear planes. Okay, so... Its load transfer would be as follows. So it would be very similar to the one in the previous slide. But in this case, so if this is to be P over 2 and P over 2, this one right here is to be force P to attain equilibrium. And if this is force P right here, it means that this section of your bolt is more um, critical than that of this ones on the top right here because the force that is acting upon this points right here are just P over 2 and the one in the middle is, um, just, I mean, force P and P is greater than P over 2. So once again, its uh, load transfer would be as follows. And as you can see here, we wouldn't be experiencing bending unlike this one right here. So yung bending natin dito, wait. So unlike this one on the bottom right here, we wouldn't be experiencing bending here since the centroid of this um, force is on the left acts exactly in the middle and this force right here acts exactly on the centroid of the bolt. So we wouldn't be having the presence of lever arms. So that is for the load transfer and the types of joints. Okay, um, you might have heard this a lot from me already. Whenever we are to design a certain structural component, we must first take into consideration all possible failures. And once all possible failures are taken into consideration already, you must design that certain component to resist the failure that you have anticipated. By that line itself, what we must first consider right now are the uh, methods or the possible failures of bolted joints if we are to design bolted joints. So the first failure right here is the failure by shear of the bolt. So shear. 
Okay, so that is for letter A. And for letter B, this is your tensile rupture stress. So we have already discussed about this last prelims. And for letter C, this is a bearing failure of the plate. So bearing. And this one right here. So for letter D, this is to be the shear failure of your plate. So this one right here. So shear. So this is for plates and this is for bolts. Okay, and this one right here. So for your um, case letter E, that is to be double shear failure of the bolt. So if you would be having a butt joint, so this is for butt joint, its failure would be in this manner. If we are to, to I mean, if we are to talk about shear, so shear of bolt. So, okay, once again, are you following, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, so there. And these are the cases, I mean, these are the parameters that we would be needing in designing and analyzing our connections. So, as you can see here, you, we have already discussed this before, last prelims. So, this is to be the pitch and this is to be the gauge. Okay, and as for the tables of the values, I forgot to copy them here, but they are included in the reference material that I have provided to you before. And these are the minimum edge distances of your bolts as defined by each of these bolt diameters right here. So for example, that your bolt diameter is to be 16 mm, the center to center spacing from that, um, from that hole up to the um, to the edge is 22 mm. So meaning, if this is to be 16 mm right here, this distance right here from the center of the hole up until the edge is 22 mm. So the, all of these are the minimum edge distances. And if we have the minimum edge distance, we also have the maximum. And the maximum edge distance right here as defined in this uh, section right here, the maximum edge distance should not exceed 12 times the thickness, so it should not be a greater than uh, 12 times the thickness, or it should also not be greater than 150 mm. So whichever is smaller in this uh, values right here would be the governing one. So that is for the ma maximum edge distance. And we also have the maximum spacing of the connectors. So for connectors that are painted, so kapag napinturan yung members mo, or, it, or may it be unpainted but it is not subjected to corrosion. So corrosion in Tagalog is yung pangangalawang. So if it is not subjected to corrosion, your um, maximum spacing for each of the connectors would be 24 times thickness or 300 mm, which is, whichever is smaller. So this spacing right here is the center to center spacing of your bolt. So it would be this one right here. Okay, so that is for painted members or unpainted mem members that are not subjected to corrosion. So meaning this section right here is for steel that are not critical to corrosion. And as for this section right here, it is said here that for unpainted members of weathering steel subject to atmospheric corrosion, your maximum spacing here should be 14T or 14 times thickness or 175 mm. Once again, whichever is smaller. Okay, so moving forward. So this would be the nominal hole dimensions that we would be using. And you have already... Um, I mean, you are already familiar with this table right here from last prelims when we have talked about the analysis of tension members. So if your bolt diameter is to be 16 mm, you are to use 18 mm nominal diameter of the hole. And if you are to use 24 mm, you would be using 27 mm nominal diameter of the hole. But take note guys that this is according to A. ISC only. But if we are to consider NSCP, so it is said in NSCP that whenever we are to analyze our steel sections, these, these nominal dimensions right here must be 2 mm greater than the nominal dimension of the hole. So if we are to use 16 mm bolt diameter, 
and since this is to be your nominal hole dimension, so 18 mm, and as per NSCP, we would be adding another 2 mm. So meaning that is to be 20 mm. And for example, that you would be using an oversized dimension, and for example, that this is to be, um, let's say that you are to use 22 mm bolt diameter, you are to use 28 mm nominal hole dimension, but according to NSCP, you would be adding another two. So from that itself, your, I mean, the dimension of the hole that you would be analyzing is to be 30 mm instead of 28. So are you guys following? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Though hindi pa natin napag-usapan itong oversized diameter dati, this is to be standard, oversized, short slot, and long slot. So for standard size, so this would be used for bearing connections. So bearing. And this oversized diameter right here is used for slip critical. By the way guys, you can also use standard diameter for your slip critical. But for your oversized diameter, it is not recommended for you to use it for bearing. So if your uh, hold, I mean, if your hole would be oversized, it is better for you to use slip critical. Anyway, and this two right here, so what, what are these two slot holes right here? So if this is to be your short slot and this is to be your long slot, they would basically look like this one on your right. So here. So for your long slot or your short slot, it would look like this, but the major difference is that of course, your long slot would be a lot longer than that of your short slot. So as you can see here, the dimension of your sl short slot would be 18 by 22, but if you would be using long slot, 18 by 40. So it would just be longer. So okay, and for your slotted holes, which is short slot and long slot, they are used for slip critical connections and rarely for bearing type connections. But if you would be using them for bearing type connection, make sure that your force would be uh, perpendicular to the direction of the slots. So for example, that once again, this one is your holes and let's say that you would be having a certain bolt here if your force is to be in this direction right here which is parallel to the direction of the slot you can only do this i mean you can only um, install your bolt like this if your connection is slip critical but if you are to have a bearing type of connection you cannot use this connection right here rather you must use um, bearing type connection if your force would be perpendicular to this. So this can be for bearing. You can either use bearing or slip critical. But if your force would be only in this direction right here, slip critical lang dapat. You cannot use it for bearing. Do you guys follow? Yes. Yes. Okay, so there. And for your standard and oversized diameters, they would be just a perfect circle. Okay, so moving forward, so this would be the nominal strength of our fasteners and threaded parts. But as you can see here, I have provided two tables. So this table right here is from the book of Jack McCormack and this table right here came from the National Structural Code of the Philippines. And if you can see here, there is a value here that is different from each other. So it would be this values right here. So 188 and 165. So they are different. I don't know why, but they are different. But since we are in the Philippines, it is better for us to use this table instead, which is from the National Structural Code of the Philippines. And besides, this value right here is smaller than this. So meaning this value of 165 megapascals would give us a more conservative value for our analysis. Take note guys that this bolt specification right here which is A307 is just for common bolts. So common bolts. And common bolts is sometimes referred to as um, unfinished bolt. Unfinished. So there, and all of these bolts right here are what you call high-strength bolts. So high-strength 
buds. So you can see here the difference of their tensile stress and their shear stress. So from 310, it doubled. Are you guys following? Yes, sir. Okay, so these are the formulas that we would be using for our bearing. So if deformation around bolt, bolt holes is a design con consideration, we would be using this formula right here. And if the deformation around the bolt is not as design consideration, we would be using this formula right here. So these two formulas right here can be used for standard sized uh, holes, for oversized holes, and for short slotted hole, holes, so short slotted. And this one on the bottom, it can be used if the bolts used are in long slotted holes. So this one right here. But make sure that your slots being perpendicular to the forces is to be analyzed. So it is same as this. So it should be perpendicular. Okay, so what does this mean? So for, I will just be erasing it first. So it is said here that if deformation around the bolt holes is a design consideration. So meaning that if the deformation around the holes is less than 8 mm. And if you don't really care about the deformation around the holes, you can use this. Or for example, that it is okay for you that the deformation of the holes is greater than or equal to 8 mm. M -M. Let's just have an example problem here. Okay, so in the example problem, determine the design strength and the allowable strength for the bearing type connection shown. So this would be our bearing type connection. Steel is of A36 specifications and the bolts are 22mm A325 specs. The holes are standard sized and the threads are excluded from the shear plane. So take note in this line right here, threads are excluded from the shear plane. Assume that deformations at the bolt holes are a design consideration. Okay, so let's tackle this item per item. So it is said here that we are to determine the design strength. So if we are to talk about design strength, that is to be in LRFD. And in LRFT, that is to be phi, P, N, or phi, R, N. So whichever the case may be. And as for the allowable strength, so allowable strength, this is to be in ASD or P, N over omega or R, N over omega, whichever is applicable. Okay, and it is said here that the steel is of A36 specification. And if we are to look at this table right here, this is to be the um, yield stress and the ultimate stress of the following ASTM designations. So if it is said here that our, our steel is to be of A36 specification, it means that we would be having yield stress of 36 cubes per square inch and an ultimate stress of 58 to 80 kips per square inch. But since it is not specified here what the um, rupture strength is, it is better for us to assume that our tensile stress or, or ultimate tensile stress is to be 58 since that is the most conservative value for our FU for A36. So listing them here. Our Fy is equal to 36 kips per square inch. And our Fu is equal to 58 kips per square inch. And we must multiply this by 6.895 apiece to convert them into megapascals. So looking at the calculator once again to your left, 36 times 6.895, that is to be 248. So rounding it to the nearest whole number, so 248 megapascals and as for our ultimate stress that is to be 58 times 6.895 and that is to be 400 megapascals okay and what's next so it is said here that the bolts are of standard size and the threads are ex excluded from the shear plane Okay, so take note once again, the threads are excluded from the shear plane. And 
the next parameter that we should know is the design strength i mean the strength the nominal shear strength of your bolts or your fasteners of i mean and threaded parts so since it is said here that the threads are excluded from the shear plane we will be using these parameters right here because according to this parameter right here this is for a325 volts when threads are excluded from shear planes so a325 and threads are excluded from the shear planes so from that our nominal shear stress in bearing type is to be 457 megapascals so okay where is that 457 megapascal so this is to be for the uh, stress of the bolts so for the shearing stress of the bolts fn so it is 457 because in this case this i mean the threads are excluded from the shear planes and you would be using this value right here if the threads are not excluded from the shear planes but it is said here in the problem that the threads are excluded from the shear plane so 457 and in analyzing let's take note that we must get first the cross sectional yielding limit state and the second one is to be tensile rupture strength and what else so for the third one let's check if the bolts are adequate in bearing and the fourth one let's check if the bolts are adequate in shear are you guys following yes po, sir uh, mr narvaez nakukuha yes po, sir Miss Maneha, okay? Yes, sir. Okay, sige, uh, proceed na muna tayo. So, using this um, limit states right here, we would now be solving for VPN and VRN. So, 1, G, S, Y. So, for our gross sectional yielding, our PN here is just our gross sectional area times our FY. So, we already have our FY, which is um, 248 megapascals but for our AG which is the gross sectional area that is to be the area of your plate and the plate has a thickness of one half inch and it has a total width of 12 inches so let's convert them into into millimeters so for one half inch so this is equal to so we would be multiplying it by 12 I mean 25.4 so 0 0.5 which is one half times 25.4 so uh, as i was saying um 12.7 and 304.8 so are there any questions on this so this is purely um conversion so 12.7 and 304.8 so from that are gross sectional area 12.7 and 304.8 so once again this is to be our ag and for our fy this is to be 248 mega pascals so there and solving for our pn right here this is to be 12.7 times 304.8 times 248 and our answer here would be 959 998.08 newtons and if we are to divide this by 1000 that is to be 959.99808 kilonewtons so divided by 1000 so let's round it up to 960 kilonewtons so if this is to be your pn so for us to get uh, its value in lrfd so lrfd so phi pn is equal to um, 960 times phi and our phi in gross sectional yielding is equal to 0 0.9 so our answer here would be 960 times 0 0.9 864 so this is to be in 864 kilonewton so this is to be in lrfd and for asd 
in ASD, our strength, our allowable strength is to be PN over omega. And this is to be equal to 960 divided by omega. And our omega in ASD is to be 1.67. And from that, our answer here would be, so 960 divided by 1.67. So, 574.85 kilonewton. So, this is just for cross-sectional yielding. So, next up, let's solve for tensile rupture stress. So, TRS. And for our ten tensile rupture stress, our PN is equal to FU times AE. But our AE is equal to U, or the shear lag factor, times our net area. And our shear lag factor can be seen here. So all tension members where the tension load is transmitted directly each of the, in, I mean to each of the cross-sectional elements by fasteners or, or welds, that is to be case 1. And if you would be having a case 1 shear lag factor, you would be having a shear lag factor equal to 1.0. So our shear lag factor here would be 1.0. And for the net area, this is to be gross area minus the area of the holes. And it is said here that our bolts, I mean the bolts to be used are of 22 mm steel. So if we are to have a 22 mm steel, the area of the holes, I mean the diameter of the hole, is equal to this one right here. If our bolt diameter is to be 22 mm, our standard diameter is to be 24 mm. So, 24 mm. But according to NSCP, we must add another 2 mm. So, our diameter of the hole that we would be using here is to be 26 mm. Okay, so solving for our area net. So, let's just directly substitute it here so for pu this is to be equal to fu and our fu is to be 400 megapascals times u which is 1.0 times our area net and our area net is equal to area gross and our area gross is 12.7 times 304.8 minus the area of the holes so in this line right here so in this line right here we have two holes so this is to be two times the diameter of the hole and the diameter of the hole once again is 26 mm so times 26 times the thickness of the plate so times 12 0.7. Are you guys following? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so solving for this, this is to be 400 times 1 times um, 12.7 times 304.8 minus 2 times 26 times 12.7. And my answer here, I mean our answer here, by the way, this is not PU, this is PN. And my, I mean, our answer here is equal to, so checking this, 1284224. If I would be dividing this by 1000, our answer here would be 1284.22. So 1284.22 kilo newtons so for us to get its value in lrfd we must multiply it by our redu reduction factor so pu is equal to uh, phi pn where phi is equal to 0 0.75 this time because we are to have a rupture limit state so if I am to multiply this by 0.75. Our answer is now 963.168. So 963.168 kilonewtons.
So this is to be for LRFD. And for our ASD, our PA or the allowable stress is equal to PN over omega where omega is equal to 2.00. So this is for tensile rupture strength. And from that, our PA is now equal to, so once again, 1284.22 divided by 2. So our answer here is equal to 642.11. So that is for tensile rupture stress. I mean te tensile rupture strength. And so from that, we have already solved for this. For this, so for now, let's solve for the bearing and the shear capacity of the bolt itself. So for the bolts, so let's write number three here. So bearing. So it is said in the problem that we are to consider deformation. So from that, our formula, I mean the formula that we would be using is this formula right here, which I would be pasting in this slide right here. So there. So for your Rn, that is to be equal to this. So 1.2 times LC times TFU and 2.4 D times T times FU. So whichever is smaller in these two. So what is the value of this LC right here? So for LC, what would be the value of LC? Oh, by the way, sige, mag recap muna tayo. So the formula here is 1.2 times LC times T times FU. So the value for your T right here is to be the thickness of your plate. And this FU right here is to be the ultimate stress of your plate. And this LC right here is to be this length right here. So, wait. So, it is either this one right here, the edge-to-edge -edge distance of the two bolted connection, or this one right here. So, from the edge of this bolted connection up until the edge of your member. So, ayan. So, whichever is small, smaller here, so if this to be LC and this is also LC, whichever is smaller, you would be using that. Okay, so let's solve for LC so LC may either be, teka, kopyahin muna natin itong figure na to in, the, in our slide right here. So once again, our LC can either be this one right here or this one right here. Okay. So 3 inches is approximately equal to, so converting this to millimeters, so 3 times 25.4, that is equal to 76.2. So 76.2. Okay, so for LC, it may either be this one right here. So the first option is that is 76.2 minus half of the two holes right here. And our hole, once again, has a dimension of... 26 mm of if i'm not mistaken no so yes 26 mm yung ginamit natin which is this one right here so 26 so, so i mean 26 divided by 2 times 2 so our answer here would be 50.2 so 50.2 and as for the other one so for this option right here so from this from the outermost part of your hole up to the edge that is to be so lc might even be three inches which is 76.2 minus 26 over two so it would just be half of one a hole are you guys following Yes, sir. As for the others, nakukuha nyo pa ba? Yes, sir. Okay, so from that, our answer here would be 63.2. So now we would be comparing this to right here and we can now safely say that the governing one here would be 50.2. So ito, ito kasi yung mas, ma mas maliit. 
Okay, so from that, we would now be uh, substituting our values here. So our n is equal to 1.2 times LC, which is 50.2 times the thickness. Our, our thickness, once again, is 12.7. And our FU is equal to 400. And we, we would be comparing it with... 2.4 times D. What is D? That is to be the diameter of the bolt. The bolt, okay, hindi yung hole, yung bolt. And our bolt here is to be 22 mm. So, 22. Check ko nga ba, tama ba? So, yes, 22 mm. Okay, so times 22 times the thickness of the member which is one half or 12.7 times fu which is 400 so direct substitution okay so solving for this 1.2 times 50.2 times 12.7 times 400 okay by the way guys that this formula right here so this formula right here is just for one bolt but if you would be having 4 bolts, tag dito, multiply nyo lang siya by 4. But right now, sige, sulat natin to. 306019.2 And this is to be less than or equal to 2.4 times 22 times 12.7 times 400. This is to be equal to 268.224. Tama ba? 2.4 times 22 times 12.7 times 400. Okay, so 268. So, ano ba yung nag-govern dito? So, as you can see here, this is a lot less than this. So, meaning, this is to be your governing factor. So, your Rn right now is to be equal to 268.224 newtons. But take note that this is only for 1 volt. And since we have 4 volts, we would be multiplying this value by 4. So, Rn times 4 is now equal to 1072.896. Okay. Okay, so ayan, meron na tayong Rn. So right now, we would now be multiplying it by our reduction factor or divide it by our factor of safety to get its ASD and LRFD design strength and allowable strength respectively. So for our LRFD, that is to be phi Rn. So ito pala yung total Rn natin, no? So from that this is to be um, what would be our fee for uh, bearing of the bolt so according to nscp that is to be equal to so fee is equal to 0 0.75 so 1072.896 times 0 0.75 so getting the answer here that is to be equal to 804.672 So there And for ASD Our omega now is equal to 2.00 For ASD, our allowable strength Is to be Rn Divided by omega So from that 1072.896 Divided by 2 is now equal to so rn divided by omega is equal to 1072.896 divided by 2 so 536.448 so 536.448 kilonewtons so this is to be the values for bearing so lastly after bearing, we would now be solving for the shear. So, shear naman tayo. So, for your shear, it is pretty straightforward. Dito na lang, no, sa baba. Okay lang. 
So shear. So for your shear, our Rn is to be equal to Fn or the strength of your bolt times the area of the bolt times the number of bolts, so N times the number of shearing plane per bolt or better yet, the total number of shearing planes. So dito na lang yun sa, sa, sa N, no? i-incorporate na lang natin siya. So yung N natin na ito is to be the number of bolts times number of shearing plane. But in our case right here, so meron tayong apat na bolts and per bolt meron tayong tagi-isang shear plane so it would just be multiplied by 4. But for example that we have this one right here. So for example that we would be having a butt joint. So per bolt we would be having two shear planes. So for example that you have four bolts and per bolt you would be having two shear planes. Two times four that is equal to eight. Are you guys following? Yes, sir. How about for the others? Yes, sir. How about for Miss Balagtas, kuha? Yes, sir. Mr. Alejandro, kuha? Yes, sir. Miss Gonzalez, kuha? Yes, sir. Okay, so, ayan. So, balik tayo. So, for our shear ones again, our N is equal to FNAB times N. So, substituting known values, your RN is now equal to FN. And ang FN natin is... 457 so 457 times AB and the area of the bolt is to be pi over 4 times the diameter of the bolt squared and the diameter of the bolt is 22 mm so ayan 22 mm so 22 squared times the number of bolts times the number of shear planes. So once again, we have four bolts right here with one shear plane each. So times four. Okay. So check. Okay. So ayan, um, substituting known values and solving for this, 457 times pi. So shift pi divided by 4 times 22 squared times 4 and our answer here is equal to 694882 so divide na pala natin to by 1000 para kilonewtons na agad yung labas so divided by 1000 that is to be 694.88 so 694.88 kilonewtons. So, if we are to get its um, design strength, so LRFD, our fee here is equal to 0.75 and for our ASD, our omega right now is also equal to 2.00. Okay, so for LRFD, our fee P, I mean fee RN is now equal to so 694.88 times 0.75. Our answer here is to be 521.16. So 521.16 kilonewtons. And for ASD, RN divided by omega, that is to be equal to. Um, 694.88 divided by 2. So that is to be 347.44. Okay, so now that we have completed our solutions already, we would now be choosing the appropriate design strength and the allowable strength. And by that, we must choose the least value. So sa gross sectional yielding natin, it would be this one right here. So 864 and 574.85. So I would just be copying this to our next slide. Dito, lagay natin dito para summary lang. This is for gross sectional yielding. 
and for tensile rupture stress it would be this so itong pangalawa tensile rupture stress and for our um, bearing it would be this so for bearing may nahihiwalay lang and for shear it would be this one right here so ayan yung ating summary ang pangit lang ng presentation pero yan yung summary and from that we would now be choosing the list among these um, answers right here so for LRFD the list value here is to be 521.16 iba natin yung color para mas okay naman kahit papano so this is to be our governing um, value for LRFD or the design strength and for the allowable strength it would still be this one right here which is 347.44 kilonewtons so there basically that would be our answer so are there any questions guys well, very good okay how about for the others so miss phil yes sir okay so very good sino pa ba oh, mr domingo kuha sir dun sa process po dito mm -hmm. pang same lang po ba siya dun sa bat joint kapag double shear po kasi yes hindi. sa double shear kasi oh same process siya in terms of bearing kasi actually dapat yung next problem natin double shear pero wala halos parehas din lang anyway if this is to be the case kunwari analysis problem to um yung sa bearing natin mamimili ka kasi kung saan yung critical and eto meron tayong bearing up i mean bearing on this part right here meron din tayong bearing sa part na to meron din tayong bearing sa part na to ngayon may mimili ka ng isa so et kung etong part na to yung pipiliin mo you would be using um, the thickness of this um, plate right here in this formula right here sa bearing kasi ito may may thickness dito Yun lang naman mag-iiba, itong thickness lang na to sa bearing. So, sa thickness na yan, sa bearing, doon lang mag-iiba. As for this cross-sectional yielding and TRS, ganun din mamimili kayo kung anong plate yung sa tingin yung masisira. So, ayan. And as for um, itong shear naman na to, parang sinabi ko nga kanina, this is to be the number of balls times the number of shear plane. So, from that itself, iba yung solution niya dun sa kanina. Teka, i-copy-paste ko lang yung ating formula ng shear. So, it, ito yung formula natin ng shear. So, di ba ito yung Rn natin. Fn times AB times N. But this time, Rn, kunwari dalawang volts lang siya, no? So, our Fn, yung Fn direct sub, kunwari, eh, wala, hindi kasi binigay dito yung Fn. Eh. Pero kunwari, 457 times area of the bolt and the area of the bolt is ano ba yung bolt na ginamit dito 20 mm so pi over 4 times 20 mm squared times the number of shear planes and the shear bolts so dito kasi um, kunwari dalawa lang yung bolts natin pero per bolt we would be having two shear planes per bolt once again so it would be uh, 2 times 2 which is 4 but for example that we have um, 4 volts here, kunwari total niyan apat, and we would be having um, 2 shear planes each. So 4 times 2, ang ilalagay nyo dapat dito is 8. So aside from that, same na siya ng approach dito. So yun doon lang nag-iba sa dalawang yun. That is to be for bearing. So dito magkakaiba lang kayo ng analysis dito. And dito, mag-iiba mag kayo ng value ng N dito. Nasagot ko ba yung tanong mo, Mr. Domingo? Yes, sir. Clear po. Okay. So, ayun lang naman. So, dito kasi, guys, take note. Ito, hindi ko na isasolve to, pero madali na lang to. So, take note, guys, that itong um, thickness na to is less than this. But, um, this force P right here is greater than P over 2. So, mamimili ka ng critical kung ano yung i-analyze mo, kung saan yung bearing na, yung pinakamaliit na Rn, and yung pinakamaliit, ayun, yung pinakamaliit na Rn ng bearing, and pinakamaliit na Rn ng shear. 
So, ayan. And as for the others, yung gross sectional yielding and tensile rupture stress, parehas siya sa inyong prelims. So, ayun. Okay na, Mr. Domingo? Or medyo nalilito pa? Uh, medyo okay na po. Okay. So, ayan. So, once again, ito, huwag niyong kakalimutan tong value ng N na to. So, ayan. And as for this, mag-ingat din kayo sa pagpili ng thickness nyo. Dito kasi, itong thickness na to, lap joint lang kasi siya. So, mamili ka lang ng isang thickness dito kasi same lang sila. So, ayan. So, bago tayo mag... Pero kung magkaiba okay. po yung thickness, parang doon sa double shear, sir, pipili lang po ng isa doon na sa tingin mo yung parang uh, mag-aponit. Yes. yes, yes, exactly. But in this case kasi, so ito no, 12.7 ito sa taas. So kung isipin mo kasi itong 12.7 na to mas critical dapat siya dito, di ba? Kasi mas maliit siya. So parang kung iisipin mo nga mabuti, mas, um, I mean, ano, um... Mas may tendency na mapupunit itong 12.7 bago pa mapunit itong 9.05. Yun yung common misconception. But the thing is, yung dito sa um, member na ito, which is this, ang force niyan is kalahati lang, P over 2. Pero yung dito naman, P yung, um, yung force niya. So mas malaki yung force na na-exert dito sa member na to as compared with this. So kapag i-solve mo yung dalawa, Kung isolve mo yung value dito, pati yung value dito, mas mag-govern yun dito. It's because that your force P here, so your force P here is larger than P over 2. Kuha, Mr. Domingo? Yes, sir. Sir, kung magsosolve po ba kami, mas, mas okay po ba na mag-assume na mas, ito, yung pipiliin plate is yung mas makapal kaysa doon sa mas madipis? Mm, not Entirely. Kasi pagbaliktad naman to, kapag kunwari ito yung plate mo is kunwari ito yung 19.05, ito naman yung 12.7, ito, ito pa rin yung mapupunit na plate kasi etong P na to is mas malaki sa P over 2. In most cases kasi, kung saan yung P mo, kung saan, yes exactly, kung saan yung P mo na Kung saan yung location ng PIMO, doon yung masisira, which is yung etong isa lang. Kasi dito sa isa, etong, etong area na to, para magtutulungan kumbaga etong dalawang plates mo na to, kaya naghati sila ng, um, tag dito, naghati sila ng load. So, as you can see here, via equilibrium, eto P over 2 na, eto P over 2. Kaya to answer your question, hindi automatic na kung saan yung mas makapal, doon yung, um, dun yung mas critical. Nag, nangyari lang na in this case kasi mas critical yung etong point na to kasi mas malaki nga ng malayo yung force na to kaysa sa yung forces na ito. So kung hindi ka sigurado, mas magandang isolve mo na lang yung dalawa tsaka ka na lang mamili kung ano yung mas maliit na PN. Okay, so malinaw naman? Malinaw, sir. Ayun, okay. So ayan. So, before we dismiss, are there any more questions? Hi, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, in case po na yung critical plate is yung nasa P over 2, mm -hmm. yung value po ba ng N dun sa, sa formula ng shear is ano? Dalaw, ay, is, is, isa lang yung shear plane na ano? Pakinakonsider. Okay, um, hindi. Itong shear plane natin na ito. Itong R, et, ito ba yung pinag-usapan mo? Yung pinag-usapan natin, uh, Ms., Mr. Parel? Ito yes, formula sa hindi etong formula na to wala yang pinipili as in buong ano yan buong um bolt yan so etong critical area na to para lang yan dun sa ating bearing which is this one right here so, asa na yan ito etong formula na to pero for your plate i mean for your shear panglahatan talaga siya so eto pang pang total kasi talaga siya. So kahit kahit mag-govern itong etong values mo na to, itong mga nasa gilid, if we are to consider simple connections which is eto nga, hindi hindi mo na i-consider kung anong part yung mas critical basta yung shear plane mo is yung total na shear plane na tutulong para sa iyong I mean para sa mga sa connection mo. 
yung magre-resist pala ng inyong forces. So, malinaw ba tayo doon, Mr. Parel? Or medyo, medyo hindi clear? I sure gets po. Okay, sige. So, are there more questions? Are there any more? Yes po. Sir, pwede bang i-upload niyo yung mga slide din, sir? Para mas madali pong balikan sa video. Um, ganto kasi hindi PowerPoint yung ginamit ko dito. is Ito whiteboard lang to eh, kaya hindi siya slide per se. Kaya hindi siya napiprint. Kaya ang mas maganda na lang, eh, kapag dun sa mga video, i-screenshot nyo na lang. Saka nyo i-save. Tapos pa-SSD na lang. Hindi, joke lang. I-screenshot nyo na lang. Hindi kasi ano to, hindi kasi PowerPoint. So ano to, um, whiteboard, openboard. So hindi siya nasi-save talaga.